Hey everyone, it's Dr. Andrew Wolf here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is on respiratory alkalosis, and it's part of a series on interpreting ABGs. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now let's get started. Of all the acid-based disorders, respiratory alkalosis is probably the simplest. There are only really a few causes of respiratory alkalosis, so it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on and to differentiate just based on, on history for a patient. First, uh, just recall that in our earlier video when we were talking about the basics of acid-base balance, remember that CO2 acts in the body like a volatile acid. So when it is dissolved in water, it becomes carbonic acid. So for all intents and purposes, when we're talking about CO2, we're talking about an acid. And so a respiratory alkalosis is when there is not, when there is an abnormally low level of CO2 in the blood. Now, a normal PaCO2, which is partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood, is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. So if we have a PaCO2 that is less than 35 and we have a pH that is greater than 7.45, which means we have an alkalosis. So the, seven, the pH greater than 7.45 means we have an alkalosis. And the fact that we have a PaCO2 of less than 35 means that it is a respiratory alkalosis because the volatile acid in the blood that is CO2 is lower than it should be. So how does that happen? Well, because of receptors in the body for both pH and for carbon dioxide level, the body tightly controls the amount of PaCO2, and it does that by controlling the rate and depth of respiration. So we basically are excreting CO2 through the lungs and out into the air. And if we are breathing fast and or deep, we will breathe, we will excrete so much CO2 that we will decrease the level of CO2 to less than 35 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so what are the kinds of conditions that can cause a respiratory alkalosis? Well, they are always caused by hyperventilation. We are breathing too fast and too deep. We are excreting too much CO2. So what are the major causes of hyperventilation? Well, the number one cause, particularly for those patients that are acutely ill, is hypoxia. Now, you may be thinking, but, you know, I learned in nursing school or medical school or, um, you know, whatever basic science class that there is no such thing as a hypoxic respiratory drive in a normal person. That is wrong. It's a myth. Um, there, there is a hypoxic respiratory drive. It's part of the brain stem. There are cells in the brain stem that di detect hypoxia, that detect low oxygen levels, and that can increase the rate that can inspire the increased rate in respiration and cause hyperventilation. So really anyone who has taken care of a patient with hypoxia knows this phenomenon, whether it's you know a patient that has pneumonia, a pulmonary embolism, pulmonary edema, or actually even severe anemia. These patients will be breathing fast. So you've got a patient with pneumonia and their oxygen levels are dropping and they're breathing in the high 30s. And that is because um, their brainstem is detecting low oxygen levels, and this is causing a hyperventilation. And when that happens, it is 
the body is correcting, is increasing the amount of oxygen that can be absorbed in the blood through through hyperventilation. But at the same time, it's driving down that those CO2 levels. So note that I'm saying hypoxia, and I, those of you who have watched my hypoxemia video know that I differentiate the two. Hypoxia can be caused by hypoxemia, which is low levels of oxygen in the blood, and it can also be caused by decreased perfusion. In this case, it would only be decreased perfusion to that part of the brainstem that would cause hypoxemia in that area and inspire hyperventilation. The other cause of hypoxia is anemia, so it's just decreased carrying capacity. Now, I've only seen hyperventilation caused by anemia in pretty profound um, cases of anemia where you're down, where you have a hematocrit that's usually, you know, 35 to 50 or so, drop, dropping all the way down to 14 or 15 percent. You know, I've seen patients that become markedly tachypneic and um, hyperventilate because of that. The other major cause, very common, is anxiety. And this is typically in a, an acute situation where a person is having a panic attack or um, or severe anxiety acutely, and this causes hyperventilation. And, and many of us have seen this before, of course. Um, it can also become a chronic condition as well. That kind of leads to the third, which is hyperventilation syndrome, which is a chronic cause of of respiratory alkalosis. And one of the major causes of this is, is mental illness, anxiety, etc. And then there's some other causes that are that are relatively rare and are primar primarily you caused by neurologic dysfunction. Okay, so that's really all there is to respiratory alkalosis. So when you're thinking about treating a respiratory alkalosis, you really need to treat the underlying cause of hyperventilation. Figure out what it is. Is this caused by hypoxia? If it is, give some oxygen. Or treat the pneumonia, etc. Give Lasix if you've got pulmonary edema. And if it's anxiety, find a way to help the patient calm down with pharmacologic or non-pharmacologic therapies or a combination of both. So anyways, that's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe below.